due to its abundant resources, cutting-edge technology, and sizable markets, Africa offers a wealth of business opportunities. Over 136,000 millionaires reside on the continent already, with South Africa, Egypt, and Nigeria leading the pack. Even though young investors and business owners have also been adequately utilizing the opportunities that exist, many of these millionaires are older. According to the IMF's recent World Economic Outlook, six of the world's ten fastest-growing economies are in Africa. Furthermore, by 2050, the continent's economy could quadruple in size and be worth up to $29 trillion Africa's path to economic prosperity, like that of China and India, will produce a slew of big winners, and unfortunately, a lot of losers. The big difference is that most of the smart entrepreneurs who are currently making a fortune in Africa have a distinct perspective on the continent. Strangely, while most people are annoyed and frustrated by these issues, the business people who are transforming Africa and making a fortune are fired up and inspired by them. The successful African entrepreneurs use their creativity and innovation to tackle complex issues in a way that generates income, adds jobs, and improves the lives of people because they have a unique perspective on problems. Africa is a market that favors people who can solve problems. Therefore, the potential rewards are higher if you can solve larger problems. As such, our video today looks into the top 30 investment and business opportunities in Africa. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more exciting videos. Recycling waste and scraps is a crucial industry for the future viability of the global economy. Additionally, governments and organizations dedicated to international development strongly support recycling investments in Africa. They offer financial support and incentive programs to encourage recycling investments. Tire recycling is a highly lucrative business concept for African decision makers, particularly as African nations are seeing an increase in the number of cars and trucks. For instance, there are more than 12 million cars in Nigeria alone, and Kenya records a number of over 3 million. With tires having a typical lifespan of about four years, the future of this industry looks very lucrative. Investment in waste tire recycling facilities is made possible by government incentives and funding from international development organizations. A program for the collection and recycling of used tires in Africa is run by the Recycling and Economic Development Initiative of South Africa, but other sub-Saharan African nations also offer sustainability grants. In both European and American nations, outsourcing cleaning and security services is a common practice. African cities are also embracing this trend, particularly in Cape Town, Johannesburg, Nairobi, Lagos, Accra, and Dakar. Many businesses prefer to contract with experienced firms to handle their security and janitorial needs. A professional cleaning and security outsourcing business is something African business owners should think about starting. The sophistication of businesses is increasing and mostly internal employees handle key business functions. However, cleaning and security tasks are delegated to qualified businesses. Large African cities are currently experiencing this trend. The cost of labor is reasonable in Africa, and there is little formal training needed for janitorial work. In this region, starting a service business is comparatively simple. The lucrative security and janitorial services industry present opportunities for African entrepreneurs. Investors in large cities may want to think about establishing a reputable outsourcing business. If you ever find yourself wondering about a business venture that will assuredly provide profits and returns after investments, food processing, and packaged food manufacturing stand as a viable option. This business is successful in Africa because it serves as a stopgap to the growing consumer demand for convenient foods, especially in urban areas. Customers who can afford packaged foods are more common in these areas, so investing in this business will undoubtedly pay off. Over the past 50 years, 
processed food consumption in Africa has increased. As more people work outside the home, the opportunity cost of time for women and men has increased, leading them to purchase processed food. In addition, there is a very limited supply of packaged and processed foods on the domestic market, which means that the majority are imported. And in areas where supply exists, market monopoly dominates as there is very little competition. This opens up room for risk-venturing entrepreneurs to invest in the packaged food industry, a fully integrated and operational manufacturing facility that processes raw materials, develops unique recipes for product preparation, and then packages the finished products for distribution and sale would be a formidable investment venture. One of the most significant staple crops in sub-Saharan Africa is corn, which takes up nearly 17% of the estimated arable land there. As a matter of fact, over 300 million people in sub-Saharan Africa rely on corn for food and a living. Paired with wheat, a crop that is vital to global nutrition and is a staple food for an estimated 35% of the world's population, these crops offer an impressive investment venture for agricultural enthusiasts and entrepreneurs in general. Maize and wheat milling is a lucrative business opportunity in sub-Saharan African countries. It is a lucrative business opportunity for many entrepreneurs, with the potential to quickly grow into large commercial mills supplying not only domestically, but also regionally. The reason for success in this venture lies in the fact that its raw materials are abundant and reasonably priced on the continent, particularly as many African nations already cultivate maize and wheat. Furthermore, because it is a staple food for the majority of the continent's inhabitants, its demand is always very high. This demand is expected to increase in tandem with the rapid growth in population, and finally, the relative ease and lack of technique required for mill operation eliminate complicated procedures. Running a mill does not necessitate many complicated procedures, and factory workers can start using reliable machines after some training. Furniture is showing its tenacity as one of the industries that have grown in direct proportion to income growth and as the average income and population of middle-income people are rising, so is the demand for lavish and comfortable. And what other way to show that but to spend on comfy and beautiful furniture? Consumer trends are shifting, and many wealthy people want luxury furniture and decor for their homes and offices. Furniture is in short supply in sub-Saharan African countries, and due to a lack of distributors, the existing items are very expensive. There is a lot of money to be made in this appealing venture. Clothing is a business sector that is highly correlated with the country's economic growth. There is a high demand for clothing and apparel in African countries, but there are not enough branded and reasonably priced clothing companies. African consumers follow fashion and seek higher quality textiles. Although Chinese textiles are inexpensive, they are usually of poor quality. European brands are of high quality, but they are incredibly expensive for the mass market. So with precise planning, clothing customization can be simpler than in other industries, and with a minor cost increase, you can have your products custom branded. You can build your brand with less capital and fewer stocks. Before making an investment in this industry, entrepreneurs should think about the lead times and product quality, whilst frequently updating the stock, because fashion trends change quickly. Also, the factory's proximity to the retail market is crucial, and disruptions to the logistics and supply chain should be avoided. Finally, the investors should adapt their products to the preferences of the market and follow the consumer demands in each African nation. Solar street lighting technology has become extremely efficient as a result of improved solar panels and the energy efficiency of LED bulbs. 
Solar street lights have grown more prominent as a viable solution to traditional street lights in African countries because of their tendency to curtail the exacerbating power outages in several African countries promoted by installing conventional street lights. As the global drive to push for renewables intensifies, governments and international organizations are pouring money into renewables and therefore structure numerous incentives for incorporating renewable technologies into daily life. Lastly, solar street lights do not necessitate infrastructures such as connection to the national grid or routine maintenance and are relatively simple to install and use. This technology is rapidly gaining notoriety on the African continent as many homes, hotels, resorts, and industrial facilities are embracing the solar water heating technology as a means that provides free hot water for a multitude of functions. It is a highly feasible investment venture because in Africa, the average number of sunny days is high, and many countries receive direct sunlight all year and do not experience freezing temperatures. This technology is relatively inexpensive, and as such, it is required by a large number of households and businesses. The installation does not necessitate extensive technical knowledge, hence employees are capable of handling the installation of new units just after a few days of training. In Africa, Water treatment and purification are critical, particularly in several remote villages that lack access to safe drinking water. Generally, a large portion of the population struggle with access to clean water, and as such, the capacity to provide and deliver potable water to households presents highly significant opportunities. In present times, water filtration technologies are numerous, and the equipment varies in size and capacity. Middle-income households in African cities prefer to filter tap water with small home-type water purifiers that are available for sale to African consumers. Regular inspection and maintenance of water treatment systems generate additional revenue. Revenue can be generated, for example, through the initial sale of the system as well as through the contractual maintenance scheme. Water purification services are becoming increasingly popular among African businesses who can form alliances with international companies and serve as their local distributor and service center. Watch the full length of the video on our new channel, The New Africa Wealth, which is dedicated for finance and wealth creation in Africa. Check the video description or the pinned comment for the link to the channel. As always, make sure to subscribe to the new channel for more exciting topics about business opportunities and wealth creation in Africa.